positive spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. On today's program, we'll profile Mark Lopez, a Los Angeles environmental activist and recipient of the Goldman Environmental Prize. We'll learn how young people in Cuba are carrying on the musical traditions of their enslaved ancestors. We'll hear the perspective of the executive director of the California Historical Society on the continuing influence of San Francisco's historic Summer of Love. Alfie Pettit, AKA Ariel Trampway, will talk about his life experiences from growing up being bullied for being gay to being honored for his humanitarian achievements with a star on Palm Springs Walk of Stars. We'll see how Brazilian rapper Rico Dalassam is using his music to slam racism and homophobia. And finally, we'll hear a personal message of peace from five-time world champion boxer, Timothy Bradley. In our first segment, we profile the important work of environmentalist Mark Lopez. Born and raised in a family of activists, Mark Lopez persuaded the state of California to provide comprehensive lead testing and cleanup in East Los Angeles homes. The homes had been contaminated by a battery smelter that had polluted the community for over three decades. For his leadership, Mark Lopez received the prestigious Goldman Environmental Prize. <laughs> The glitz and glamour of Hollywood isn't that far from the working class communities of East Los Angeles. These neighborhoods are home to generations of Latino families. Despite what a lot of people's perceptions are of East LA, this is definitely a, a hard-working, family-driven community. Mark Lopez learned about the importance of community involvement at the feet of his activist grandparents. My family's been here since the 50s. My daughters are fourth generation. This is the community we've built, the community we're responsible for, the community we fight for. The people of East LA have been living in the shadow of Excise Battery Recycling Plant for more than three decades. And the aim of the facility was to get the lead out that was inside those old batteries to make new batteries. So it sounds like a great type of recycling operation, right? But the fumes from the lead in the batteries would go up the stack and out into the community. And in that process, release lead dust into the air to the tune of seven million pounds. This widespread blanket of pollution resulted in extremely elevated lead levels in the children living here, contributing to health issues as deadly as cancer. We actually had to go door to door knocking to inform residents of what was happening and get them to sign up to get their homes tested because the state wasn't taking that on. In addition to this community outreach, Lopez organized protests and testified at government panels demanding soil testing. And people have told me, oh, you know Mark's mad when he smiles really big. <laughs> it makes me really angry. Lopez further mobilized people with events like his toxic bike tours. You can't see Exide from here, but there's Exide lead in this soil. His efforts paid off when soil testing revealed the contamination was worse than anyone expected. This brought greater attention to the environmental health disaster and led the government to force Exide to cease operation. It was one remarkable victory. But there was an even bigger challenge ahead as Lopez then switched his focus to securing funding for contaminated soil cleanup. We worked with Mark and with the community group that he represents, the East Side Yards, and we took a, a busload of about 50 community residents to Sacramento. Less than a month after that trip, that's when the governor announced that he was going to put forward $176 million. But we know that the cost of cleanup is above $350 million. This is our Flint, Michigan. There's never been a cleanup of this magnitude. 
in the area the state is currently looking at, we're talking about 10,000 residential properties. Lopez continues his work passionately involved in protecting and fighting for his community and his growing young family. Thinking about my daughters, Chole and Luna, I want them to understand that they have a responsibility to ensure that our communities are safe, that our communities are healthy. For outstanding environmental achievement for North America, the 2017 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Mark Lopez, Los Angeles, California. When Africans were brought centuries ago to Cuba to work on the sugar plantations, they brought their cultural traditions with them. When they arrived, they embraced the tempo of the indigenous population and mixed it with their own African beat. In the following United Nations video, we'll learn how young people in Cuba are keeping the music of the enslaved alive in their own cultures. Magali Rolando is a piano teacher who lives in Havana, the capital city of Cuba. She eagerly teaches the younger generation about the roots of Cuba's music. Music lies at the heart and soul of every Cuban. It originated mostly from Africa by those who were brought and enslaved centuries ago on this Caribbean island. Magali's ancestors originated in southern Africa, which connects her to the African beat. Besides teaching, Magali plays in a musical band led by 45-year-old Ramon Garcia, who creates his own music. Now songs and tunes are mixed with Spanish and pre-colonial indigenous origins as the enslaved embraced the tempo they found in Cuba when they first arrived. It is estimated that more than one million Africans were brought to the island through the port of Matanzas, some 100 kilometers from Havana, as part of the transatlantic slave trade from the 16th century until slavery was abolished in Cuba in 1886. <laughs> Lo más malo que hicieron fue separar familias. O sea, padres, madres, hijos. Separaron familias, separaron cultura. In 2007, the United Nations designated March the 25th as the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. It also established the United Nations Remember Slavery Program, which works with educators and civil society to teach future generations about the causes, consequences, and lessons of this human tragedy, and the dangers of racism and prejudice. 
Today, people of African descent treasure the legacy of music and song brought to Cuba by their ancestors, and the younger generation is keeping that flame alive. But that isn't the only contribution of people of African descent to the development and culture of Cuba. In recognition of its African heritage, Cuba participates in a global slave route project initiated by UNESCO in 1994. La decisión de Cuba de destinar el castillo de San Severino a la creación de este museo dedicado a la ruta del esclavo. En la construcción de ese castillo estuvieron las manos esclavas. Entonces se decide destinarlo a la creación de este museo. Situated at the docks of Matanzas, the enslaved would carve symbols on slabs of stone depicting their religious and cultural background. Porque pensemos que eran personas que traían consigo, en algunos casos, un alto nivel cultural y que, bueno, desgraciadamente se vieron confinados a esa condición humana. Now a cultural heritage site, San Severino Castle documents the history of slavery through memorabilia dating back to the 16th century. By the time slavery was formally abolished, the enslaved had constructed forts and iconic buildings that still stand today, attracting thousands of visitors to the island. There are around 200 million people of African descent living in the Americas. Many millions more live in other parts of the world, outside of the African continent. Across the globe, Africans and the African diaspora continue to suffer inequality and disadvantage because of the legacy of slavery and colonialism. In addition to the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade, the United Nations has also set aside an international decade for people of African descent, which began in January 2015, to acknowledge their contribution to human history. The decade also recognizes injustices they endured while promoting and protecting their human rights. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations. San Francisco is in the midst of celebrating the 50th anniversary of the city's historic Summer of Love that inspired a generation of youth to embrace the principles of peace, love, and compassion. In the following segment, the Executive Director of the California Historical Society discusses the continued significance of the Summer of Love in 2017. The interview is conducted by Evan Hirsch of NowShareLove.com. found Anthea Hardig, the executive director of California Historical Society. Hello, Anthea. Hello, darling. How are you? I am doing great because great. this is so exciting. It's it summer is. love all over again. We're surrounded by the right. imagery, the vibe. Absolutely. The message. The coolness. The culture. The, the community. The spirit. The craziness. So you run the California Historical Society. Uh, history sounds important to you, I'd figure. Uh, just a little bit. I think history, as Faulkner said, you know, the past isn't dead, the past isn't even past yet. And I think that, especially this year in 2017, that the events of the birth of the counterculture in 1967 are even more powerful and poignant and are filled with lessons for us of tolerance and acceptance and community and art and expansion of our hearts and minds. So yeah, I love history. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so and what, why is it important to bring this back and keep focusing on and remember and sure. bring it to today's consciousness? Sure. Um, the broader events of 1967, of course, um, preceded by the incredible kind of events of the 60s and especially 1966, focus attention on San Francisco as a place where hundreds of thousands of people would flock to and try and imagine a different way of living and of loving, whether they were protesting the war or fighting for civil liberties, they found increasingly a home uh, here in San Francisco. So we've worked now with and great groups like yourself and about 50 others to create this commemoration of the 50th anniversary, all under the umbrella of, of um, the Summer of Dot Love, 
where you can go and see everyone's events, exhibitions, symposia, conversations, music, um, and ways in which to really remember um, and feel that kind of resonance of that beautiful summer. I love to see so much effort and resources and thought being put into this commemoration, what you do. I mean, summer of dot love. A whole website was created. People, yes. there are, are, are armies of people working on the, this remembering and this focus on what happened here 50 years ago. Right. And with incredible partners across a huge range of social services, arts, music, culture, and really civic partners. The mayor has uh, formally embraced the Summer of Love. San Francisco Travel is, of course, key to our efforts as a great partner. And the bringing together of all of those groups, whether it be the Asian Art Museum or the De Young, um, the Grammys, um, Seoul, um, but really people throughout the Bay Area, throughout the state, and throughout the world, uh, I think, to come together to experience the summer and all those incredible lessons and those good love and vibes. So let's yep. elevate the consciousness now as began and as you called it, the birth of the counterculture movement. Yep, yep absolutely. In our ongoing series, Inspirational Life Stories, our correspondent, Brenda Lynn Martin, interviews Alfie Pettit, a.k.a. Ariel Trampway. Brenda Lynn Martin with Positive Spin TV, and I'm presenting Inspirational Life Stories, and today is with the fabulous Alfie Pettit, a.k.a. Ariel Trampway. Diversity is the centerpiece of what makes the United States great and our country's lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community is part of the U.S. tapestry of diversity deserving of respect. In our next presentation of Positive Spin's Inspirational Life Stories, we profile a gay man and humanitarian who has worked for the Desert AIDS Project, the LGBT Center of Palm Springs, and the Human Rights Campaign. And now, the inspiring story of Alfie Pettit, a.k.a. Ariel Trampway. Alfie, just tell us where you came from, where you grew up, and what brought you to Palm Springs? Well, I was born and raised in Vancouver, Washington, Portland, Oregon area. That's where I came out, and uh, after that I went to Hollywood for about 10 years and had a successful autograph business there. Um, so I've lived in multiple places, Thailand for another nine years, and uh, what brought me to Palm Springs was I had been living in Thailand and I wanted a different experience and um, I wanted a more spiritual experience, let's say. So Alfie, let's go back in time as a child. When did you know you were gay and tell us about if there was any bullying or discrimination and how did your parents relate to it? Well, I remember very young my sister had a boyfriend and at the time, my, you got his little baby face was on. I remember having a crush on him, and I must have been four years old. But as far as I can remember back, my mother and my sister, you know, I was like their little doll. They would dress me in drag. How is your relationship with your family today? Today, it is marvelous. I mean, my mother has always been my biggest supporter, and she's always been my champion. Um, she's always gone to battle for me. And um, in my dad, when I came out when I was 16, was very supportive. And my mom said to my dad, um, you know, our son's gay. And, and uh, I said, well, what do you think dad's going to say? And she said, if, dad, if he doesn't like it, he can leave. So that's the kind of support that I had. And I left home when I was probably 16 and ran away for a while. And, you know, and then they said, you know, if you're gay, come on home. It's okay. You yeah. seem to be so comfortable in your own skin. How did you get that confidence over the years? I guess, you know, it, it stems back from my mother. My mother always said, be yourself. If they don't like it, too bad, you know? And she always ingrained that in me, always to, you know, be true to yourself, don't care what other things, you know? And it's very hard because we always care what other people think. Absolutely. You know, and to agree that's good. So, what do you think your message would be to the youth today? I would say, be yourself, act in love, stay out of fear, 
and you know just try to be yourself you know in a world of you know so many people are copying and doing selfies selfies be yourself there you go you know <laughs> Right? You got it. You can't be anybody else. I'm taken. She's taken. You know, you might as well just be yourself. That's right. Yeah? Exactly. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Have fun. This is not a dress rehearsal. That's right. Life is not a dress rehearsal. Enjoy. Thank you, Alfie. It's been a pleasure. Thank I love you. you to death. I love you. Thanks for asking me. Okay. Okay. Brenda Lynn Martin with Positive Spin TV. I'm here with another inspirational life story with Alfie Pettit, a.k.a. Ariel Trampway. In the following United Nations video, young Brazilian rapper Rico Dalassam uses music as a way to confront racism and homophobia. Born and raised on the outskirts of Sao Paulo, he decided to take a stand against prejudice through rhymes that celebrate pride and bash discrimination. O racismo ele tem essa força de ser um fim na vida de um monte de gente. O porquê de não estar na universidade, o porquê de não estar no trabalho, o porquê não acreditar no sonho, o porquê não viver uma relação, o porquê não ascender em diversos aspectos. O rap se tornou as palavras. Palavras de força, palavras de resistência, palavras de afronta, palavras de rebeldia. E bem lacro a favela vem hackear Pra quem vem caçoar, vem tumultuar Trazendo batidão que faz bumbum soar O gay, a lésbica, o corpo trans de periferia Ele ainda recebe uma outra colocação que é a margem da margem Só que pra mim sempre foi muito claro O poder que o hip hop tem de transformar narrativas. Eis aqui, um negrinho cheio de querer, trocando campos elísio por champs, elísio, creme pra não envelhecer, curtindo o Michael Bublé, no cash sem miseré, na maior dignité, rica, saudável comendo até rúcula, na reunião da cúpula, pra ver no povo no sofá. Direitos, leis, imaginário coletivo, social, sobre a nossa existência aonde ela possa ser mais leve, aonde ser negro não seja uma guerra, onde ser gay não seja um grande desafio. Que a mulher negra não tenha que ser tão forte durante sua vida inteira. 
Sabe quando você se sente morto muitas vezes? Só que aí você vai ver sua carne, ela se tornou mais resistente. Acho que a soma disso é ou é derrotismo ou é petulância. E eu me identifico com petulância. Procure o que é sorrir assim no dicionário. Procure o que é sorrir assim no dicionário. final segment we hear a personal message of peace from five-time world champion boxer Timothy Bradley. So what does peace mean to you or why is it important? Ah, peace, what does peace mean to me? I mean, I think if I can sum it up in one, one word, I would say love. Peace is just, uh, it's love. It's something that, you know, we can all go around and be feel safe and be content and, you know, be happy with our lives and, uh, you know, help one another and, you know, and uh, respect one another. And, and uh, you know, can we all just get along? I mean, I know this is on, but, uh, but man, I, I think that, um, Peace is very important in the world, man. Um, you know, we're all different in, in our own ways. And uh, whether it's religion, uh, you know, whether it's uh, color, whether it's race, whatever you name it. And uh, if, if, if we can all just get to get alone and, you know, and understand one another, that we're all different and, and love one another, it's just, this place would just be a lot, a lot better, man. It'd be a lot better. And, uh, you know, a lot safer for uh, everyone. Wow. That's great, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy. And I'm Jack Hernandez. And we want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive, positive news. news. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.